our intellect. Our intellect is in our heart, not in our mind. It is important for you and me to constantly make muhasibah, to make muraqibah, to call ourselves to account, to bring to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above His throne in a, majesty, in a manner that befits His majesty, and that He is the all-seeing, the all-knowing. As some of the Salaf once said, before you look, know that Allah sees you. Before you speak, know that Allah hears you. Our judgment, my brothers and sisters, it stems from our heart. This is why the Prophet wasallam he said about the heart, إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسِدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسِدُ كُلُّهُ That if it is correct, if it is upright, if it is whole and pure, then the entire body is pure. The entire body. And connected to our bodies are our five senses. We look, we smell, we taste, we hear, we touch, we walk. All of this is connected to the judgments in our hearts. And then he said, If it's corrupt, That when it's impure, when it's corrupt, when it's not right, my brothers and sisters, a corrupt heart, one that is tainted with shirk, one that is tainted with bid'ah, it is hard to correct it. And it is something that we need to constantly observe. Hudayfa ibn Yaman, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he described the heart as being of four types. Four types. He said, Al-Kulubu Arba, that there are four types of hearts. Qalbun, a heart, Ajiru, Ajirdu fihi saraju, yushiru fadalika kalbul mu'min. Wa kalbu aglifu fadalika kalbul kafir. Wa kalbun mankus fadalika kalbul munafik. A'rifa thuma ankara wa absara thuma amiya. وَقَلْبٌ تُمُدُّ مَادَّتَانِ مَادَّتُ الْإِمَانِ وَمَادَّتُ النِّفَاقِ وَهُوَ لِمَا غَلَبَ عَلَيْهِ مِنْهُمَا Hudayf ibn Yaman رضي الله تعالى عنه from the Sahaba He said there are four kinds of hearts The first heart is one that is untainted This pure heart has a lantern which shines. Fihi sirajun yushiru. It has a lantern which shines. This is the heart of the believer. Fadalika kalbul mu'min. The second kind of heart is the heart that is wrapped up. This is the heart of the disbeliever. The third kind of heart is the one that is relapsed. He described it as being mankus, relapsed. This is the heart of the monathic, the hypocrite. He knows the truth, then he denies it. He sees the truth, but he closes his eyes. And then the fourth kind of heart is the one which is stretched out on two bodies. One body of faith and the second body of nifaq, of hypocrisy. This kind of heart is which, and it goes with whichever part of the body dominates it. Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyya, rahimahullah, Shaykh al Islam, he mentioned some very important benefits and reminders about these four kinds of hearts. In regards to the first heart, the one that is untainted, he said this means that the heart is rid of everything other than Allah and its messenger. It's freed itself and it's safe from falsehood, from bottle. It's freed itself from shirk. It's freed itself from kufr. A lantern which shines. He said in the Prophet, uh, Hudayfib in Yaman, he said about this heart that it has 
a siraj. It has a lantern which shines. Ibn Uqayyim, he said, this is the lamp of faith. Hudayfa pointed to this trait that it's being untainted, not polluted, not mixed with anything, unadulterated, pure. It's free from false doubts, shubha, that resemble the truth, wa shahwa, wa hawa, and desires that lead astray. Due to the heart being in this state, it has obtained a lantern that illuminates it. It's light. It sends out light. And this is the light or the radiance of knowledge and faith. When your heart, my brothers and sisters, is pure from shirk, when your heart is pure from riyah, when your heart has ikhlas and mutabi, when your heart has sincerity and does things the way that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has prescribed, then the rest of your body is going to be following that nature. Whether it's in sadaqah and giving a nice smile to your brother when you see him and give him salams. The action of when you say assalamu alaikum, extending your hand and shaking your, shaking your brother's hand, as this is the most complete form of giving the salams. Putting your hand in your pocket and taking out some money and putting it in the sadaqah boxes. Using your feet to walk to the masjid, doing everything that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has legislated and trying your upright best to follow his sunnah. The second kind of heart is the heart that is wrapped up. Think about something that's wrapped up, closed, sealed. Can anything get inside of it? Padlocked. This refers to the heart of a kafir, the one who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who disbelieves that the Quran is a speech of Allah, the one who rejects Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who rejects that the angels, the one who claims that there's a big bang theory that this world just came into existence by sadfa, by coincidence, the one who denies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne. He himself, he said, Ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa. Allah Allah isn't everywhere in his existence and his that, but he is above his throne in a manner that befits his majesty, but his knowledge, he sees everything. This makes him everywhere. A person who denies that, those things, as the Imam to Arba, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, Imam Malik, Imam Shaf, Imam Ahmad, has said that this kind of belief and rejection of these things is kufr. This is the aqeed of the Prophet He used to go and test the slave girls. Not just one time, but on many occasions. He used to say, ain't Allah. In some narrations, they would point with their fingers. In some of time narrations, they would say, Fissimah. And he would say, man ana. And they would say, unto Rasulullah. As some of the reports have said. So the disbeliever, his heart is covered in wrapping and cloak. It's covered tight, so the light of Iman and knowledge can't reach it. The knowledge of light and Iman can't reach it. This is similar to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He described the Jews in the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, and they say, our hearts are wrapped, meaning that they do not hear or understand. They do not hear or understand. When a person's heart is wrapped up, when a person's uh, hearing to where they can't hear the truth, when a person's sight, when they can't see the truth, then this is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he has described the people in the Quran as being dumb, deaf, and blind. Dumb meaning they mute. They know the truth but can't say it. Blind, they see the truth but can't fully comprehend it. Or in some cases, they can't see it in total. Hear the truth, as we say, it goes in one ear and out the other. They're unable to comprehend it. So they said our hearts are wrapped. A blah placed this cover over their hearts. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, beware of sins. Beware of sinning. Sometimes sinning 
prevents a person from comprehending the truth, although it may be as clear as day. Sometimes you might have seen or heard of a person joining you in Salah, praying five times a day. Then later on, he became a mulhid, an apostate, an atheist. He denied it because of sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his comprehension. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his sight so he couldn't see the truth. So Allah, he placed it there. And when he placed it there, the kuffar, they reject the truth and arrogantly refuse to accept it. This is what the Prophet said about arrogance. It is to reject the truth and to look down on people. Therefore, this barrier on the heart is a deafness in their hearing and a blindness in their sight. Moreover, this casing that they have on their hearts, the kuffar, it is a veiled mask over their eyes. Allah says, and when you, Muhammad, recite the Quran, we put between you and those who don't believe in the hereafter an invisible veil, and we have put the covering over their hearts, lest they should understand it, and in their ears is a deafness. In Surah Al-Isra, verse number 45-46. This verse, my brothers and sisters, it shows us that the hidayah is totally in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to save us from all shirk and all kufr. Continuing with the third kind of heart, and the third kind of heart is one that is relapsed. Hudayfa used the word here, relapsed, to show the state of the hypocrites, those who have hypocrisy in their heart. Allah says, then what is the matter with you that you were divided into two parties about the hypocrites? Allah has cast them back into disbelief because of what they have earned in Surah Tanisa, verse number 88. The munafiqun, the munafiqin, the hypocrites, they outwardly express iman on their tongues, but in their hearts they have shek, they have shubha. They don't have full belief. This is why it is important that you understand that Iman, as defined by the Salaf al-Salih, is qawlun bi lisan, is speech on the tongue, wa amalu bil arkan, and to do actions by the requirements that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa tasdiqul bil jinan, and confirmation in the heart. Iman is three. Speech on the tongue, belief in the heart, and actions on the body. This is Iman. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave us some descriptions of hypocrites. The statements of hypocrites. The munafiqun, for example, they have a difficult time making Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha in the masajid. The munafiqin, whenever they speak, they lie. Whenever they, break, whenever they make promises, they break them. And whenever they're entrusted with something, they prove to be treacherous. Beware, my brothers and sisters. Beware of these characteristics. As Imam Noah, we have said, Rahimahullah, in his shah, in his explanation of Kitab al-Iman to Sahih Bukhari, Imam Noah, we said that when a person has these traits, all three of them totally connected to his akhlaq, then we fear that eventually he will become a full-fledged hypocrite. So the hypocrite, his heart is relaxed. This means that Allah has caused them to suffer to go back into falsehood. They were in this falsehood because of the dishonesty of their deeds. Beware of riyah. 
Beware of riyah, beware of doing deeds to show off. Beware of doing things so that people praise you. This is a sign of riyah. It lacks ikhlas, sincerity. And all of this is connected to hypocrisy. The relapsed heart is the worst and the most wicked type of heart. It believes that falsehood, it believes that the lies are true. The person with this kind of heart in his chest helps his companion and fights falsely against the truth and its people. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth and last kind of heart is one that is stretched out on two bodies. First, the body of faith, and second, the body of hypocrisy. This type of heart doesn't have Iman firmly established in it. Therefore, its light doesn't shine. It's dim. Its light is dim. On one side is Iman, and on another side is hypocrisy. It doesn't hold the absolute truth inside. The absolute truth is what Allah sent with His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On the contrary, this heart, it has some truth and some falsehood. And sometimes the disbelief is stronger than the belief. And other times the belief is stronger than the disbelief. So whichever one of these two elements is the strongest inside the heart, then this is the way that that person is going to behave. This is the way he's going to behave. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a firm heart. You see, my brothers and sisters, when we return and we look back into many of the athar, into many of the ahadith, we see that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam focused a great importance on the heart. So much so that one of his most frequent, one of his most uttered dua was, Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. He was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but yet he asked for firmness. In another narration, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the heart is in the fingers of our Rahman. He changes them as he wills. In the times of fitna like today, my brothers and sisters, I advise myself and you, constantly make evaluation of your heart. Hudaybah said there were four. Which one of these four hearts do you have? Which one of these four hearts do I have? The heart, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another narration collected by Ibn Abi Asim, Kitab al-Sunan, he said, the heart is like a feather in the middle of the desert being blown by wind. Anyway, it blows, it goes. My brothers and sisters, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 